Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salient Consulting and in this video I'm going to demo how to use container fields and related records to store multiple files for a given project. So in a lot of cases you might create a container field for every type of file that you're going to store, maybe photo 1, photo 2, an agreement container field, a contract container field, and so on. But the problem with that is that it's not easy to expand that. So if later on someone says, hey, we should be able to store this other type of file, you, you as a developer would have to go in and create a new field. With this approach, I'm suggesting that you use related records so that you can store as many files as you want. And with a little preview pane, you can actually still interact with those files without having to leave the project record. So let me just demo it real quick. If I click on add new file here, a popover shows up asking me what type of file I want to upload. For example, this back here, this FileMaker training series is a PDF. And what's cool about being able to choose what file I'm going to import, I can actually import it based on that type and I can interact with it right within the field. So you can see that I can scroll through the pages. I'm going to choose an image here and let me choose this monsters JPEG and dump it in there. And you'll see that I can go ahead and give it a title and now I have that monster 2 that's attached to this project detail. So I can click on this FTS and it shows me that PDF. I can click on monster 2 and it shows me that JPEG. Now if I choose an other file, it's just going to dump that file in there and it's just going to show me an icon. Which makes sense because I can't actually interact with an FFMB12 file within a container field. There we go. So I can go in here and just give it, you know, entitled FMP12. And now I have my three files and again I can toggle through all of them. So how did I set this up? Let me jump into layout mode. The first thing is this add new file. So these three buttons run the same script but they all have different script parameters. So this one says that the parameter is PDF, the second button will have image, and the third button will have other. So let me look at that add new file. So what it's doing is it's, it's taking the project ID and memorizing that. It's going to create a new record within the file layout. And it's going to go ahead and say and put in the project ID into the proper field. So all we've done at this point is created a new file record. From there it remembers what the ID of the file is because that has its own primary key or its own uh, unique identifier. I go back to go to the original layout which is this project details layout and then I set a global field called ID selected to whatever that file ID is and then I commit the record. The reason I do that is because this field right here comes from a different relationship. So this portal is from the relationship called file. This portal is from the relationship called project underscore file underscore selected. And what that does is there is a global field. Let me just show that real quick. called ID selected field and then let me over here add the project ID to or the file ID as well just for the sake of the example here so this is getting populated and that tells you what you're going to see here because according to my relationship here's that project underscore file underscore selected the relationship is matching the ID to the project and then the selected ID to the ID of the file. Now the reason I put in this first criteria is so that if I move projects, I won't see a file that is associated with a different project. If I had this removed and the file ID 512 was selected, it would show me file 512 even if it didn't relate to that project. So it's just a little extra safety mechanism that I've built in there. So you'll see that this says 512, 517, 518. So because 512 was the new file that was added, that's what was dumped in there. So back to the script, when I go in here and I set that field to the correct file, the one that I just created, I can then go to that object, go to this container field here, and I can insert a PDF, insert a picture, or insert a file depending on what I chose from that popover. And then it just takes me to the title at the end so that the user can type in a title. So if I were to do that one more time, you'll see I'll click on add new file. Let me, let me actually run that with the script debugger. So I'm going to choose that I want to import an image and I'm going to run through the script. So it's going to go to the layout file. It remembered what the project ID was. It's going to make a new record. It's going to set that project ID to the 2 because that was the project I was on. It's going to commit the record and it's going to set the variable to that new ID. So now if we look at that, 
there is something in here that says ID file is 519, so we want to remember that. It's going to go to the layout that I was on before, and it's going to take me to the proper tab just to make sure I don't leave this tab. That global field is going to get set to that number 519, and then it's going to commit the record and refresh the window. So now you'll notice that this over here is empty because it doesn't. I haven't put in a file in there yet, but you'll see that 519 is what's showing. So now I can go to that container field, and I can, in this case, I'll insert a picture because I chose that when I was selecting that before. So I'm going to choose the same image here just for the sake of ease. And you'll see that it dumps that right into that field and it takes me to the title field so I can type in a title again. So it's kind of cool because I get to interact with the PDF or view the image without ever having to leave this layout, but I can associate as many files as I want to this project. And then the script that runs this is very similar. It's basically taking whatever the ID is, dumping it into that container field, and then because of the relationship, it'll show up below. So I can click on Monster 2, or Untitled FMP12, or the FileMaker training series, and it means that I can see that file right then and there. There are multiple ways of implementing this. This is just one way. If you don't want to interact with your container field, so if, you, if they're all images or if they're all just files, you could have a popover that when you click on this row, a popover would appear, um, but popovers don't work when it's through a portal, so that's the only caveat there. But there's definitely, you know, you could also have it so that when the user clicks on this, a, a completely new window comes up that lets them, you know, resize so that the container field resizes. That's always a great way, especially if you have documents with a lot of text, but there are some pretty cool ways of doing this. Hopefully you find this useful and, and you can implement this in your own solutions. I think it's a great way to build a system that can grow with time without requiring a lot more coding from the developer. Thanks for watching and uh, please leave any comments if you have any questions. Thanks!